you'll see. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio today with co-host Jay Dash and JK47. We got our weekly news segment for you. The Cardinals play starting pitcher Lance Lynn on the 15-day DL with a right forearm strain. The move is retroactive to June 8th, but a clear timetable for his return is still unknown. Yeah, they already lost their number one starter in Adam Wainwright earlier, and now this is really their number two starter in Lance Lynn, so he goes down. But Jaime Garcia looks pretty good so far. And of course, Michael Walker has been outstanding. Absolutely. Pirates ace Garrett Cole became the first pitcher in the majors to record 10 wins. He went six innings and a 4-3 win over the Phillies on Saturday. Cole is on pace, in my belief, to be the National League starter in the All-Star game, even though it's going to be all Kansas City Royals in both the AL and NL by the time those bastards get done. Yeah, it is. He's been great this year. You know, I mean, 10 wins before the break. Actually, just got his 11th <clears throat> yesterday. A-Rod hit the 2,000 RBI mark on Saturday after hitting a two-run homer in the Yankees' 9-4 loss to the Orioles. His next milestone is 3,000 hits. He's just one away from that right now, and I love seeing A-Rod getting all these milestones in your face, New York. I hate you, Yankees. And it's one thing you could say about the 3,000 hits. You know, nobody's going to bring that with steroid abuse in the question. Believe it. Tigers former ace Justin Verlander made his season debut on Saturday after spending more than two months on the DL. He allowed two runs and three hits and two walks while striking out only two batters in five innings. Uh, they went up against the Indians. Like we said, he's been on the DL for two months, so you can't expect a whole lot out of him in his first return, but a little more than five innings would have been nice. Yeah, I think he actually just threw 86, 87 pitches, something like that. So he definitely could have went longer into the game if he was a little bit deeper into his season. Mm. How was his velocity in that start? He hit 96 was his highest. Not bad. The Twins' Byron Buxton and the Indians' Francisco Lindor both made their long-awaited MLB debuts on Sunday. Buxton hit ninth and went 0-4 with a run. Lindor entered as a pinch hitter, went 1-2. for two. Neither have made a major impact so far, but they both have good upside, and each player should make multiple All-Star appearances in their career unless they just tank. Billy Hamilton stole a career-high five bases Sunday night and scored the Reds' only run in a 2-1 loss. He's still struggling at the plate, though. I think he's down at ninth in the batting order, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they moved him down in the order, and his average is very low right now, but he's not striking out a lot. He's putting the ball in play, and I expect his average to move up to around 250 by season's end. The Padres fired their manager, Bud Black, after a disappointing start to the year. They were 32-33 and 33 at the time of his release. They will look to replace him with interim manager for the rest of the year. And who knows what they're going to do, but they should be killing it right now. They should be way better than 32-33. and 33. Well, quite possibly. I mean, it just goes to show you can't really buy a baseball team. Yeah, I think they should have gave this guy a little bit longer of a leash. Well, I personally like Bud Black. I thought he was an outstanding manager. You know, he had very little to work with in a lot of those years. I mean, he got a little bit more this year. The Rays signed Grady Sizemore to a minor league deal this coming not long after the Phillies released the veteran outfielder. He was hitting just 245 for the Phillies, and injuries have really slowed down what looked to be a good career for Sizemore, especially in like the last four or five years. He hasn't done much at all. I mean, this is a guy that had a huge 2005 through 2008. He was one of the best, most productive outfielders in baseball. You know, pretty much a good defender, great bat, stole bases. And, like, I mean, and as you just said, I mean, injury is pretty much derailing his career. The Mets designated starting pitcher Dylan Gee for assignment this week. Gee's name has surfaced in trade rumors recently, even on this show. They're looking to make room for top left-handed prospect Steven Matz, a guy we talked about in one of our prospect checks. Uh, Gee struggled this year with a 590 ERA in just 39 and two-thirds innings. Matz has yet to be recalled. Gee's a, usually a pretty good back end of the rotation guy, but this season he's been struggling, and they needed to get him out of the rotation, and he doesn't have much trade value when your ERA is at nearly six. Marlins ace Jose Fernandez announced this week that he expects to return from Tommy John surgery and make his first start of the season on July 2nd. He had the surgery in early 2014. Yeah, a little bit too late for the Marlins on that, but I mean, it'll be nice to see him throwing again. You think they have no shot of making a comeback in this division? No. Well, maybe, but I mean... It's that, early. It is Their still GM early. GM turn manager doesn't help. He has no idea what he's doing. 
Who do they got out there? Where's Council Dan at? Milwaukee. Dan Jennings is their manager. Yeah, Dan Jennings. Who's Dan Jennings? He was their GM when they fired the manager. He demoted, pre-moted, I don't know, whatever you call it. He just made himself manager. Sounds like a news anchor's name. Dan Jennings. Maybe it's Peter Jennings' brother. <laughs> the St. Louis Cardinals are under investigation by the FBI for hacking the Astros ground control database. Some of the information acquired by the Cardinals include trade discussions, scouting reports from the Astros organization. I've heard that this isn't limited to just one or two players. There's about up to six people they're looking into. Uh, all these people will be fired, and the Cardinals could be fined by Major League Baseball and obviously get in trouble by the FBI. I want to know if Top Brass actually took this information from them and used it in any way. They might have unknowingly done it. I think Belichick has a stake in this team. Probably. The Cubs recalled top prospect Kyle Schwarber on Wednesday. In his debut, he went 4-5 for five with a triple. He had three runs, two RBIs, and a 17-0 win versus Cleveland. Schwarber is expected to There's spend... There's Cleveland team. <laughs> Don't be hating on Cleveland. <laughs> Schwarber is expected to spend six games as the club's DH for interleague play and then get his first action at the AAA level after that. He was the fourth overall pick in last year's draft. Yeah, they're going to call him back up later this season after... He goes back down the trip away when the rosters expand to 40. And he's he's not going to be playing catcher, though. And I think it's going to uh, actually move him away from the catcher's position in the long run because I don't think uh, when they call him up, they're not going to want to send him back down because this guy's going to kill it with the bat. And he's just not going to have time to mature as a catcher. The Giants have signed infielder Marco Scudero to a major league deal so he can retire as part of the organization. Scudero was a huge part of the Giants' 2012 World Series team and won the NLCS MVP. He finished his career with a 277 batting average with a 341 on base, 77 homers, and 55 steals. Had a career year, if I'm not mistaken, back in 2012. A serviceable major leaguer. Yeah, he wasn't bad. I mean, he came up huge in the playoffs, obviously, for the Giants. And you're right, that was a career year for him. He batted well over 300 that season. Padres outfielder Will Myers had surgery to remove a bone spur from his left wrist and will be out at least eight weeks. Myers hit 277 with a 322 on on-base percentage with five homers before hitting the DL earlier this year. Will Venable and Melvin Upton should fill in in center field until Myers gets back. Yeah, Myers had a great start to his season, and it was supposed to be one of the best outfields in baseball, along with Kemp and Upton, brought both of them over as well. New-looking team. I'm not liking Venable or Upton out there, though. Not Justin Upton, Melvin Upton. Yeah, that's just awesome, Melvin. He goes wherever his brother goes. Isn't that, uh, isn't that what Marcy Darcy called... Uh... A wedgie? Like a wedgie that mm -hmm. she gave to Jefferson. And she goes, have you ever heard of a Melvin... So there you go, Wedgie. Hope you do good. Wedgie up to It's better than BJ. <laughs> Believe it. Well, that wraps up our weekly news segment. Thank you guys for coming in studio. Thank you, fans, for listening. Fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the website at thespreadnews.simplesite.com. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel.